I'm Matt F. Bosler, and you're listening to the Soundword Central Podcast. Hi, I'm Ben Province for SoundwordCentral.com. My guest today is the host of the Matt F. Bosler Podcast, a singer-songwriter and the drummer in the St. Louis band, Middle Class Fashion, whose recent single, Criminal Sound, is available now, and so are Matt's two recent solo singles, Waste of Time and I'll Try and Think of You. But defining Matt F. Bosler the man is a bit more complicated, but I'm going to try. For starters, he once performed the Santana and Rob Thomas song Smooth 22 times in a row in concert, and just a quick glance at his branding will leave no doubt that Matt enjoys a good laugh. Normally, these intros are to prepare the listener for what's coming next in the episode, but it's quite possible that nothing can prepare you for the one and only Matt F. Bosler, who joins me now. Glad we had a chance to do this. Same. I'm thrilled. I can't wait. Uh, who knows where we'll go, but I'm in your hands and and and, ta- and take me there. I'm a little bit unsure too, but I'm excited. Excellent. And you, and you have this quirky aesthetic that's pretty unmistakable. Is that a persona? Is that the real you? I don't know. I never thought about it. Uh, well, let's see. Is it a persona? I guess it has to be, right? I can't go into a, a bank acting like like my Instagram or something. Uh, what, what, it's always like it's a heightened version of yourself, I sure. suppose. I, I guess that's, that's what I'm, I'm doing. Uh, oh, man. To be self-analytical is tough. I just do, you know? I'm just throwing things out. And, uh, however, other people interpret it as fine. Well, that makes sense. I mentioned the tribute show you played a few years ago to the song Smooth. How does an idea like that form? Uh, well, I say to longtime collaborator Dylan Club, I said, you know, it'd be funny as if somebody played smooth 10 times in a row. Uh, and he said that would be funny. And then, uh, that when then we did, uh, and we, right. We ended up doing it 20, uh, 20. We, it was, the show was 20 for the 20th anniversary of the song. And then we, uh, we did an encore. There were two. Uh, two for the encore, and I think, uh, yeah, I, I think more people, a lot of people do that, right, where they go, like, oh, you know, it'd be funny as if blah, 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 <clears throat> and then that's as far as it goes. And it was an anniversary, 20th anniversary, right? We, it was, we did it, we did do it 10 times first, uh, two years before that, I think we did it 10 times for no reason, <laughs> and then the anniversary happened to fall on like a Friday or Saturday, so then it was another excuse to... Double it, because you don't have to have a. You couldn't just do it ten times again. I think if we were to do it again, and there's been talk, because uh, people have said, "Are you going to do it thirty? You're going to do it whatever." I think the idea would be to do it until we can't do it anymore. Sure, just keep going. You know, you start at two in the afternoon and see how many smooths you can play. And the song is so memed, you know. But I go back and forth on what I actually honestly think about the song. I, I have no, I don't know. And, and, and when you, you know, you've played it, well, at least 30, I think 34, I think we performed it 34 times now. Uh, yeah, right. It's only funny to ever, that intro is very funny now. The da, 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 da. Uh, it's like a, it's almost like a punchline, which is like how it was at the show. We would we would do it and finish it, you know, and then you talk a little bit and <clears throat> say something like, "Hey, this next one's a cover." Drummer <laughs> yeah. drummer does that thing, <laughs> sure. and it's like everybody's having a great time because the guitar riff is good. Carlos Santana is a great guitar player, and there are some good Matchbox Twenty songs. Well, and I right there's like a so we've been doing this thing on the on the podcast. Um, where me and the, the other people in the, on the pod, they're my potential co-hosts. We're trying to figure it out. Last four years, we've been whittling it down between the two of them. Uh, but we've been doing a record where one of us picks a record, we listen to the record for two weeks, and then we talk about it. And, and uh, I think especially when you start listening to something with the idea of, like, I have to have a take on this, I have to have a thought on this, uh, I get in a weird thing where I don't know... I don't know what I like or why I like it or 
Because it'll you get, you get a song stuck in your head, like smooth, right? You if you hear smooth, you're going to be hearing it the rest of the day in your head. Does that mean you like it? Uh, but I don't think so. I don't think catchy means good. But there has to be an element of that. Uh, so I don't know. I think the record club has ruined me. Smooth has ruined me. I don't know what music I like, uh, and I don't know <clears throat> uh, why. Then you go back and think of the music you do like, and you're like, why do I even, is it all just nostalgia that makes me like the things I like, or that it reminds me of old stuff that I liked, and uh, just, I'm just losing it, man, I don't know. Yeah, smooth smooth top ten songs of all time, I think. Catchy's part of it, though, but I think I think the, the gold standard is what the Beatles did. They're catchy songs from a sincere place. I love the Beatles. Yeah. But so did my mom. So is it like, is it all nostalgia? Do I like the Beatles? If you play me, uh, you know, I don't know, Revolver today, would I go, oh, what? Huh? Tax man, what? Or would I go? I think you'd like it. Because I think my dad introduced me to like help, right? Mm -hmm. But he didn't introduce me to She Said, She Said off Revolver. Sure. Or Hey Bulldog. Those are ones I just sort of found on my own. My dad likes them too, but those are ones I found later. But I was still 15, 14. True. Uh, True. I'd be interested. I'd be interested to know what I would think of the Beatles if I heard them out of context, no, no context, no anything. Someone says, hey, these, this new band put out this revolver. I'm gonna say I'd like it. I want to be. I'm, it's really I, good. I feel like I'd like it, and I want to be. I want to sound cool. That's probably why I picked Revolver too. It is the cool choice. I think my favorite is Abbey Road, though the medley. I think that's the that's the least cool choice, but perhaps the right choice because everybody that's very common, right? It's and so an you can't easy say choice. That. I mean, yeah. you did because you're true to yourself. And whereas I have, a, I think it is. It's a persona. I've decided it must be. <laughs> Because uh, I'm going to say Revolver no matter what. Uh, and, uh, oh, Abbey Road, really, dude? Okay. Rubber Soul is my cool choice. Cool. Yeah. Cool. It's quite good. Yeah. Has there been any music that you've discovered that was older that was new to you recently? Uh, recent? Oh, man. Well, I, the part of the reason we started doing uh, this record club thing is because I'm ter- I'm very bad at listening to new music uh i think it takes me a long time my my normal way of listening to a record i'll listen through it have no you know it just sort of washes over me and maybe one song sort of Mm -hmm. catches and then i'll listen to that one over and over again and then like accidentally let it go into the next song and then i'll start being like well i guess that one's actually pretty good too uh so it just feels like such an effort to listen to new music um, for someone as dumb as me. Uh, so, so we started doing the, you know, you sort of forced yourself to listen to new stuff. So I, I feel like everything I listen to is just things I listen to as a, uh, I, I was going to say the zombies, but that's not true. I, I, I got that album 10 years ago or something, which I guess is still sure kind of late, but right. Adulthood. Didn't you review Ram on one of your yes. podcasts? Yes. Yeah. What did you uh, think about that? I didn't care for it. No, I, I didn't. I didn't like it. I, I think uh, it's fine. It's not bad. And by the way, this is actually our the Patreon part of our podcast. So I feel like I shouldn't even. It's premium content. Sure. I can't just give this away. Sure. Yeah. Plug the podcast uh, on Patreon. Oh, no. I, no, no, no. <laughs> no? Uh, no? Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, but uh, uh, Ram is like, I feel, okay. I don't think Ram is bad. I think it is Paul's, like, worst instincts sort of magnified. Or worst is maybe wrong. The parts of Paul I don't like as much. And I, I uh, like, uh, he does his little... Uh, uh, voice at the beginning of Rocky Raccoon, you know? And that's fine. That's uh, that's okay. Uh, but then in this, in, in Ram, he's doing whole songs and this, right. these characters, and that's a little much for me. So for those who don't know, it's Paul McCartney's second solo album, right? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, and, and you draw the comparison to something off the White Album, which is fair, because he did a lot of uh, tracks on there where he's playing all the instruments. Yeah. Artistically, 
though, you know, getting back to your stuff, you mix comedic with playing it straight, though, right? And your lyric writing and your branding. I, I, tr- I really, yeah, I think I am just kind of trying to, uh, I feel like, you know, there was a time when artists had to have a very, like, singular identity, right? And uh, I think a, a benefit of sort of, I don't know if it's the internet or, or just that, that there's, you can put out more content or something, but you can sh- show more facets of your personality without, <clears throat> like, oh, if he's, he was, you know, I don't know, you, you feel like if uh, 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 Eddie Vedder, like, made a goofy TikTok <laughs> when they were putting out 10, it would have been like, whoa, no, I can't listen to this anymore. Uh, but now there seems to be the, a bit of more freedom to just kind of do whatever you want. Uh, and that's what, that's what I want to do. That's fun. Right. Because I think if people, you know, checked out your website, they'd, they'd know, oh, you know, he's, he has a good sense of humor. <laughs> Made that myself, by the way. No, it looks great. <laughs> Um, but I'm curious how you balance that because a song like Waste of Time it sounds kind of early Wilco and it's a sincere track mm-hmm. it's not supposed to be funny it's right. it's just you yes and so how do you kind of combine those two worlds that's what I'm so curious about I, I don't I don't I don't think about it much I don't like I don't have a plan for it or anything if the, uh, uh, I don't think I write funny songs I don't actually like funny songs that much I think funny humor uh in songs is it seems um there's like an expiration date of like well i heard the joke so why would i listen to it again because some weird owl songs are awesome yeah yeah okay all right sure dare to be stupid is a good song it is. and 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 heightens that scene and transformers the movie uh to a, a astronomical degree uh but I'll tell you, I haven't listened to um, Off the Deep End probably since, uh, probably, you know, I, when did that come out? 93, it maybe? Fo- it followed Nirvana, so yeah. it's early 90s. Um, so 92 it, sounds right. It's just not a, not a, I guess, a thing that interests me that much to write like a, a funny song, which now I pr- I'm probably going to do that and then feel like a, a dumb guy which is and I appreciate that you have been pulling that out of me that I s- seem to think I'm a stupid man but again self being self uh, analytical is is good uh, so right but I, yeah I don't know I don't think I really try to balance it at all I just sort of do whatever feels good and what I, I think people will enjoy uh, I don't think I would write very good f- funny songs um, I think I write I think I write good, serious songs. I was going to back it up. You know what? No, no I they're do. Good. They're good. They're good. Yeah, let's talk about the other new one. Uh, I'll try and think of you. Is that dedicated to someone in particular? So, uh, sort of. Okay. And that, well, it's not funny, but I think there's a sort of a, maybe a cosmic humor. So it's actually, well, in a lot of my songs, it's, it would be difficult to say that they're about, uh, they're, they're maybe more like connotative a lot of the time than like, Specifically, mm-hmm. but that is that is the um, it was on my porch, uh, and this car c- comes off the road and hits the neighbor's car. Their two cars are parked, hits their cars, ends up it's a kid, a 16 year old kid who had a heart attack and uh, uh, he did die, he died from a heart attack. The wreck wasn't that bad, but. The, so that's the thing I'll try and think but like so part of the song right is that like I'm watching this all unfold and I and later I'm like man their cars are ruined and that sucks but it sucks more to die certainly yeah but now they have to like deal with the cars right and like normally you could you say to your friend or whatever, like, oh, man, both our car cars are wrecked. And they're going like, oh, man, that sucks. What happened? And then they have to be like, oh, it's, no, it's not so bad. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, because of sort of like the, 
relative like tragedy, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Just it was so a thing. I maybe about. trying to get across that things could always be worse. That's yeah. That's part of it. Mm-hmm. And then that like, but but the, I guess also that it is bad. Like that is a bad yeah. thing. Um. And that's a weird position for them. Uh, and just, I don't know, I guess, yeah, that, that uh, life is a, a weird thing. Because, right, if both of their cars, let's say a boulder fell down a hill and smashed both their cars, mm-hmm. they could treat that in a very different way and talk about that all the time and just be like, oh, man, it's the worst thing that ever happened. And they have the same outcome, but they can never, like, maybe truly... Uh, <laughs> express how much of a bummer that was for them because certainly a much bigger bummer happened for a whole family of of people but then the, I'll try and think of you is like I do wonder what is their memory of that now when they are or, or even four months later or when they go to buy a car mm-hmm. or figure out the insurance are they thinking about how that kid died or are they just like I gotta license this car these yeah. tip tags are about to run out I gotta figure this out yeah that is interesting so it's pretty funny well (laughs) let's talk about middle class fashion what can you tell me about the single uh from last year criminal sound uh well we we recorded at suburban pro studios with uh matthew sawicki that's where i do everything any any of my solo stuff has always been there and it was it's fun to bring other people there to to you know middle class fashion i think they, we, whatever, have recorded at different places for most albums. Uh, so that was neat. You know, you joined two two of your uh, uh, worlds, your social circles together. Um, I, you know, it's uh, Jen, uh, primary writer. Uh, Sounds a little Florence and the Machine, maybe? Oh, I don't know. I'm not that familiar. Okay. Um, Yes. Okay, great. Uh, are you working on anything new with the band? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, actually, you know, she, I think that song, I think she wrote that song after we saw the Sparks documentary. So it is, I do believe, intended to be a bit of a, a Sparks vibe. Um, I'm not familiar with the Sparks. You'd love them. Okay. You'd like promise. Okay. Uh, we're working on, on, so I think it, we're kind of doing the same thing with both projects. So it's all the same. Uh, people, you know, uh, my the Matt F. Bosler is same uh, musicians mixed around. Um, so we're trying, you know, we're doing the like put out singles thing. Uh, I don't know if that's like a, the, a better way to release music, but it it's kind of easier. Uh, and sometimes I think, regardless of necessarily what the end result of well, could, if you packaged them into 10 songs or did them one at a time, would that be better? It's sometimes just better to do the easier thing because it will happen. Uh, and if you have to get 10 things together, that might take you yeah, yeah, two years to make that work. So um, we, we have... Uh, um, we have things recorded for other things, which is, I mean, again, that's kind of the nice part of it. We have drums recorded for other things. And we can work on them a little bit at a time, sort of at our own leisure, and not have to worry too much about uh, wrapping everything up all at once. Sure. And I wanted to know if you had a good touring story you could share. I don't. Probably not, because it is. It's it's such a good group of people that we're not. You know, we're all like just kind of regular. We're not doing anything like wild, uh, and we we get done with shows and we go back to wherever we're sleeping and go to sleep and um, shoot. I want to get. I want to. Uh, I also have a bad memory. I feel like I'm. I'm gonna walk out of here. I'm gonna go. Should have said that. that. Oh man, the time I lost my foot and. Uh, <laughs> and the I was. One, I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. Oh man, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, podcasting is something you clearly have a passion for. What is it about the medium that appeals to you? 
Well, I started doing the podcast um, solely out of the, these people will have to promote me. You know, they have to link back to the podcast. And then I learned that that's not true. You think they'll do that, but a lot of times they don't do that. Uh, and um, So should I ask you to share the podcast now or later? Oh, man, I, yeah, <laughs> if it fits into the, the social media release schedule. Sure. It's very curated. Sure. I, we'll, we'll see sure. what happens. Um, but it is, I think it's just like uh, I like – well, so like once I tried – to do stand-up comedy, and I, I realize that I don't, I'm not good at, uh, it's going to sound like I'm being negative about stand-up in general, but I, I'm not trying to do that. I'm not good at telling the same joke more than one time, right? Like, I, I may, maybe I'm not good at, like, acting like something is new or something. Uh, but podcast is always a different thing, you know, and, and um, I, I like goofing around with with people uh i like the the idea i mean i've always liked sort of the more like irreverent uh interview type shows um then you know you see a thing and you go that'd be fun i'll try that um and hang out with the boys and do a pod yeah that's great well you've had a fun feud with shane presley of rock paper podcast and i'm really curious what the whole story is with that Oh, he's ter- he's a terrible man <laughs> with a bad podcast, and that's about it. I mean, I think the uh, um, sort of beginning was that he was nominated for uh, several awards um, that I feel sh- should have been me, or certainly not him, um, <laughs> and I've never been... Uh, uh, up for any kind of podcasting award. Um, okay. So I guess that is interesting that you could look at it like I feel like I'm better than him <laughs> and I have not had his success. And that is, that is maybe the whole feud. Did I read correctly, though, that the feud somewhat ended? It might be a bit of a post-credits. Okay. Might have to stick around to the end of that app. Okay, sure. Well... Is there anything else you'd like to add? New music in the works? Anything I missed? The, uh, you seem to have the most comprehensive uh, view of me of all time. So I don't, I don't think there's anything. Uh, um, I'd love to do this again. We'll save the foot story for the ne- for the next sure, time. Sure. K- tease them. Keep them. Keep them listening. Uh, no, man. Thank you. Well, thank you for doing this. Absolutely. I want to remind everybody that your recent songs, "Waste of Time" and "I'll Try and Think of You," are available now on streaming platforms. For more information about my guest, or if you'd like to just be transported to a simpler time of neon lights and flash graphics visit mattfbosler.com. And to learn more about the band he plays drums in, visit middleclassfashion.com. They recently released the single, Criminal Sound. For soundwordcentral.com, I'm Ben Province. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.